Good evening. I am Stephen Edholm from SkillCult.com and YouTube.com slash SkillCult and Instagram is SkillCult and Facebook is SkillCult and all that other stuff. Today we're going to put a wrap or collar or what I prefer to call a brace on this axe handle. This is the Council Boys axe that I was reviewing recently and I had cracked it with like a sideways torque this way internally and what I did is I wanted to take this stupid aluminum wedge out anyway. So I carved the shoulder down, jumped the axe head on far enough that it actually is compressing the crack. So the, the axe head itself is like holding the crack together now. Got that wedge out, re-wedged it with a wooden wedge like it should have, and it's better now, but I want it to last as long as possible, so I want something to put on here that's really going to compress and protect the wood. So I thought that'd be a great opportunity to talk about um, wraps and collars and braces in general on axes and then go ahead and uh, demonstrate using the one that I like the best which is rawhide. The first thing we're going to do right now is get this soaking in warm water. This is a piece of cow rawhide and this is a piece from the hide glue project so there's a whole playlist if you go to my main channel page and click on playlist there's two playlists that have the process for making rawhide. One is the hide glue videos, and the other one is the uh, axe drops. So either one of those will show you basically how to make rawhide and get you to this point. And we'll do some videos later specifically on rawhide, about rawhide and its properties, and how to make it a little bit more detailed maybe. So anyway, this is a little thicker than I want, but it's the thinnest piece I have of rawhide that's already prepared, and I think it'll work out okay. And I'll tell you why I like you know certain thickness and everything in a minute. But right now, I just want to get this soaking in warm water. Now you can soak any skin, raw skin, rawhide, any kind of leather in warm water, as long as you can keep your hand in it indefinitely. Find something to weight this down with and it'll be getting started here. And there's a possibility we won't even finish this project tonight because the rawhide won't be ready, but we'll see about that. I always have rocks in my kitchen just for things like this. There was a little video where I was hiking around and I found this artifact in the woods. It was just like a little rock with a couple different wear points on it from like grinding and, and hitting things. Well, I always have rocks like that in my kitchen that, and that's what those are. They're multi-purpose rocks. They're for cracking, grinding, uh, hitting, whatever, you know. Let's talk about handle wraps and stuff in general. So here's an axe that I got at the thrift store and it was pretty in bad shape, but it was five bucks. Uh, the handle was damaged up here from someone splitting wood probably and hitting it repeatedly. And it's a good idea to protect that. So if this had had protection in the first place, it wouldn't have been damaged. Okay, so first of all, there's no shame in protecting your handle. They get damaged. Uh, you can't always predict what's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to miss, especially if you split wood a lot. I mean, things just happen. You can't really predict how wood's going to split. You you think, I mean, you can say, well, I want to split this off, and that's just going to do what you, what you want it to do, but it, it may not do what you want it to do. A piece of it might split off, and another piece might stay put, even just a splinter, and then end up bashing your handle right here. So the things I've seen people use are metal, uh, like a sheet metal. I've also seen uh, cordage of different kinds, rubber, wrapped pieces of inner tube or like a piece of inner tube slid over the top. Uh, leather's real common and wire, uh, just like wrapped wire. Uh, my preference so far is rawhide and I've also used sinew. So this is sinew right here and we'll talk about that in a minute. So before we go any further, let's define the things that these wraps do. Okay, because that's really important. Because if we want to solve a problem or if we want to come up with something that's uh, as ideal as possible, then we need to understand why we're doing it in the first place and what those functions are and what materials will, will serve those functions. So the first one is just kind of like abrasion resistance or toughness. So if I hit this repeatedly against like a sharp piece of wood or something and I have something there that's going to resist that abrasion, well then it's going to take that much longer to wear down through and, and get to the wood and damage the wood. Another one is shock absorption. So you'll sometimes see these big rubber bumpers. They're like big heavy rubber bumpers on splitting malls and they work great as long as they stay put because all the shock is absorbed so you really can't hurt the handle any. The other one, and I think probably the most important one, is compression. 
So compression is extremely powerful with wood. And my example for that is that um, I've made a lot of arrows, like primitive arrows. And several times I've like finished an arrow and just been impatient and wanted to go shoot it a couple times, right? You know, I mean, you're just like, you just can't wait to get out and shoot your arrow, right? So I go out, you know, shoot the arrow and crack. Like the first time, you know, the, the tip of the arrow hits something hard like a rock or a log or something and the thing just splits off a big chunk and you're like, damn, all that work. If you take a piece of sinew, now sinew is tendons from animals, almost like rawhide but in strings. So you, you put that in your mouth until it's soft and you wrap it around the tip of the arrow and then it dries like rawhide really tight. That's compression. You could take those arrows. Um, when I'm stump shooting, stump shooting is just like you go out and just shoot arrows at any random thing. It's, it's just good practice because it, you're roaming around in the woods and you're shooting at different sized and shaped targets at all different angles and stuff like that. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna shoot that leaf, I'm gonna shoot that stump. But I will literally shoot rocks with those because the compression is so effective. Just this little like quarter inch wrap of sinew right up to the front end of the arrow because the arrow has no point, right? It's a target, it's for a target. So if you put a point on it, you'd just be damaging the point. And I will literally aim at rocks, like without any thought, because it's so powerful. That compression is so powerful. So it's the same on these, right? The compression is gonna hold that wood together under tremendous stress. Above the wrap, where it's actually pretty vulnerable, and below it, you know, you're not gonna, it's not gonna do much for you, obviously. But in this area, which is very vulnerable, like you have this here, this sweep, where the grain is cut through, you see cracks all the time. Like I have a handle right out there um, that's cracked that way, right here, because the grain just lifts off like that. Not gonna happen with a heavy wrap like that. It just won't happen, it won't happen if it comes down here all the way. Uh, so the compression is extremely powerful and extremely important. So one thing I don't like about a lot of the options, uh, say wire, uh, thick cord of any kind, thick leather, especially if it has like a heavy leather lacing on it, is that it's not invisible to my hand. So I want whatever is here to be basically, maybe not completely invisible, but as invisible as possible. What that means is it has a similar texture to the wood and it is a low profile. So when I'm sliding my hand up here like that, which I do constantly, I mean all the time, not, not like occasionally, I want there not to be a big speed bump. I don't want a sudden change in height where there's like something here that's kind of thick. And I don't want it to feel like it's really extra grippy or extra slippery or anything like that. Because, well, first of all, I may be using it up here. Now I've seen some people say that they like the extra grip of like paracord. Um, I don't really get it. I don't see why you need any extra grip. This is, is plenty, I mean, yeah, I, don't, I see that as a non-issue myself, so, but that's personal. I, what I don't want is the thickness or the texture. So like the texture of paracord, if I'm actually using my ax and chopping a lot, it's like every time I pick it up here, which is, you know, most of the time I'm swinging, plus any time I'm just handling the ax. Like unless the ax is dragging on the ground or just kind of hanging straight from my arm so I don't have to hold it up, where am I gonna hold it? At the balance point, because that's what makes sense. See, it can just hang in my hand effortlessly. If I'm holding it here, I'm actually holding it up and my wrist is working constantly. So I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, even here, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna slide right up to the balance point and then I can just you know, maneuver this however I want. And that's what I do, um, naturally. So I don't want anything in the way. I want the thing to be invisible to my hand. And the last thing is, I think another function they serve is the aesthetic. For people i'm no slave to aesthetics but hey you know if it looks better it looks better and i do like that like natural uh, rustic aesthetic so i get why people use leather but rawhide looks really good it looks really good it compresses like hell it is super tight you can put it on tight and then it shrinks as it dries so it squishes the crap out of this this wood and really compresses it and holds it together it also dries stiff, so it's going to resist um, a, any change in shape caused by an impact. Uh, you know, the, the word rawhide is synonymous with toughness. It can be brittle if it's very thin, but it's, in general, it's a tough material. It's much tougher 
for instance, than leather, generally speaking. I mean, it, it depends on the impact and the situation and how thick it is, but I would say for thickness, it's way tougher than leather. And I'm a big fan of leather. I mean, I'm a tanner. I make my own leather that's really tough and really nice. And if, if I were to put on a leather collar, I could make it decent, but it's never gonna perform like rawhide because it's not gonna have the stiffness and the compression and the toughness. And then also, it's basically invisible to my hand. So this is one that I did a little while back. This is the only finished one I have to show you. A little thin. You fix that. Okay, the other thing about rawhide is it's invisible to my hand for the most part. Uh, like this, I never notice on this one. This is a little on the thin side and it's a lot thinner than this one's going to be. So this is a little bit of an experiment in just how thick we can get away with. Like I'm sure I don't want it any thicker than this and I may even try to scrape or sand this down. We're gonna, we'll see about that. But um, this has pretty much similar texture to the wood, not enough to, to make any difference and it's very low profile so I don't really notice it. Like if I'm paying attention, I kind of notice it and I kind of notice the slight stitching on the back, but it's really not, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. That's why I like it. It looks great. I was able to stitch this very tight. I conformed it all the way to this curve right here so it completely covers all the wood right up to the top here. And this one I also linseed oiled and that was kind of an experiment so I kept putting linseed oil on the handle and the rawhide until, like the rawhide just wasn't absorbing any more oil. It's completely saturated. How that affects its strength, I don't know. Uh, maybe I just haven't bunged it up enough to tell, but there's absolutely no damage now. I wouldn't be surprised if it softened the rawhide and made it less tough. Maybe it would make it more tough, though. I don't really know. So the jury's out on that, but that would help waterproof it because that is the one thing about rawhide is it's water soluble or uh, whatever you want to call it. And this is also put on with hide glue, which is water soluble. So um, I think that the linseed oil pretty much takes care of that. The other thing is you shouldn't be getting your ax super wet. And if you get it wet while you're working, this is going to re-dry and you know, probably re-tighten enough to not be a problem. And the chance that you're going to actually damage the rawhide or the handle while it's, you're using it while it's wet, which should be very uncommon, just seems pretty unlikely. Yeah, great stuff. So I'm going to start working on this piece of hide right here and uh, try to get it soaked up as quick as possible. Maybe it'll be soaked up enough tonight to uh, go ahead and lace it up. If not, we might end up doing this video in two parts. It's only a little bit soft now. This is the thinnest part, so that's probably the part I'm going to use. Um, actually, that's a little too thin, maybe. But anything I can do to manipulate this right now is going to bend the fibers open and allow them to soak up water quicker. So normally I would probably just soak this overnight and ignore it and then maybe scrape on it a little in the morning. But I'm actually kind of hoping we can sew this thing up tonight. Okay, so just that little bit of bending and stretching is going to help a lot and then just letting it soak for a minute and coming back and doing that frequently. Put my multi-purpose kitchen rock on there and uh, wait a little while. I'll go prepare some other stuff. All right, let's talk sinew. So one of the things we need is sinew for sewing the rawhide up. I could use very thin rawhide strips and that would probably work okay, but it's gonna make a less invisible seam. So since I want the seam as flat as possible, I'm going to use uh, or attempt to use sinew. Now this is the tendon from the back of a deer and you can also get these out of other similar animals like uh, you know sheep and goats and cows and stuff like that elk. It's very strong and it's almost like a rawhide thread basically. It's uh, You could think of it that way. And it easily separates into these threads. What I want is a pretty thick, pretty thick thread. So I'm just going to peel off something about the size that I want. I'll probably make several threads there's always a chance that while I'm using one, it'll break. I'll have to either start using another one or I can strip that down a little more. Now 
I think that looks pretty good. I'll probably make a couple like this. Now you can soak this in water, but it actually doesn't work as good as putting it in your mouth because your mouth has enzymes that work on the proteins because it's kind of got this like these proteins in it like glue and the saliva will actually soften those and make it more flexible and stick together better. So what I'll do is I'll just curl this up like that really loosely and then just set it in my mouth for a while and if that sounds gross it, it really isn't that gross it's just like jerky like as long as the sinew was cared for well I mean I, I cleaned all this myself so I know where it came from to me this isn't any grosser than eating the jerky that I made out of this um, deer you know which unfortunately I ate all of already so I'll just set this in my mouth for a while until it softens up and then we'll finish it the other thing we need is hide glue. Now this hide glue is just kind of like the scraps that were stuck to the pan when I was making hide glue. And probably not the best quality hide glue ever, but for this project, we just don't need it to be perfect. And this is plenty strong, trust me, it'll be very strong. So I'm just gonna take some of the thinnest pieces of this and put warm water on it so that it soaks up really quickly. Can you get away with another glue? Probably, uh, you could probably get away with wood glue or white glue, I think. Um, I wouldn't know. But I'm gonna use this because it's cool because I can make it. And I don't need that much. That's probably, probably more than enough. But then again, I don't wanna run out. So I'll just throw a little more in there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of warm water on that. Not too much. Um, should be, you know, maybe the same amount of glue as water. Something like that. Okay, I'm just gonna add some fresh hot water. This is pretty hot, but I can keep my hand in it. So it's good. We're good as long as I can keep my hand in there. See, my hand's still in there. And I've been stretching this. Well, not stretching it, it doesn't stretch yet, but bending it, rolling it between my hands and just moving it as much as possible. But at this point, I think uh, a little pounding would be in order. Handy multi-purpose kitchen rock. Right here, it drops off pretty fast. Like it's coming this way and then it sort of like makes an angle. Well, the smoother that transition is and the less these fibers are suddenly cut off, the stronger it is, so I'm going to taper that or just uh, smooth that transition out so it's a little more gentle. So this handle is oiled and the oil really isn't cured as much as I'd like for doing this, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. The handle is going to be slightly smaller up here than it is down here. So once the rawhide's dry, it's not gonna be able to slip. But I think the glue will actually still help hold this even though it's um, still a little oily. So I'm just gonna use my knife at a right angle. Something I do a lot and I think is underused by, by people scraping. Get all this. Cleaned up real nice, get all these shavings out of here, and it's all ready to go. So here's our sinew, and what we need to do with this is twist it up just like this into a single strand. It's not twisted like a piece of rope with like several strands, it's just twisted up once and then allowed to dry that way and you can roll it on your leg i'm just doing it right here so you can sort of see but all i'm doing is rolling it up tight and then i'm just going to set that somewhere to dry and then it's ready to use the only thing i'll do is take my my thumbnail and kind of scrape along it to remove inconsistencies and loose fibers Otherwise, that's it. Twist it up and let it dry. All right, my axe is ready. My glue is ready. 
threads are ready, but the rawhide is not ready. And no amount of soaking, bending, pounding, scraping is going to get that thing ready before something like one in the morning or later. So I'm just going to let it soak overnight and get back to this project tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and put this video up, uh, up to the point we're at. And we'll do the rest, uh, hopefully this week, before next Wednesday, I hope. Because uh, I have a lot of other Axe content I want to cover that I'll probably get to next Wednesday.